Hey, everybody, Michael Snyder, California and Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is April 4th, and right now we are looking at the eclipse forecast here for April 8th. Total solar eclipse is coming in three days, 20 hours, and 34 minutes now. I've selected this place in Mexico. This actually has the greatest duration of totality, four minutes and 30 seconds here. So if you can get out there west of Monclova, out over the mountains here, that would get the greatest duration of totality. You can see Mazalan is here, and there's San Antonio and the path of totality itself. And this website is really nice because you can scroll back and forth and see the exact moment that the moon starts to obscure the sunlight on the planet of Earth and then moves across and really casts its shadow across the planet here about 123 central daylight time. It's going to be glorious there across the mountains of Mexico. Now, taking a look at the path of totality, this is really a nice event. I mean, it covers so much landmass here across North America. It starts right off the coastline of Mexico, and it's a pretty long duration uh, eclipse here. I mean, some areas are getting up, like I mentioned, four and a half minutes, close to four and a half minutes, and a lot of areas up towards four minutes the further you go northeast as well. That's a pretty substantially longer than the last eclipse was back in 2017. And a reminder to get in totality, you don't want to miss that because it's literally a night and day difference. If you're 99.9% .9 obscured, it is not not the same as being in totality. And this is the monkey wrench that's being thrown into many people's plans. This is day five outlook. We have severe thunderstorm potential on this day, which means we're going to have clouds out and about here across some of the south central USA, potentially extending up off to the north and east. We'll look at some of those weather models here in a moment, but this presents problems of its own because there could literally be millions of people in this area trying to view the path of this, you know, in the path of the uh, totality for this eclipse. And you can imagine, or if you have done past eclipse, you know how bad the traffic is. You can literally, it can be 10 times longer of a commute versus what it normally would be. And you could be stuck in these areas with severe thunderstorms training over a lot of people out there that had been viewing the eclipse exposed to that severe weather. Now taking a look at what's coming. This is the GFS, most recent model run, 12Z. Here we go. The system ejecting out over the northern plains. Powerful subtropical jet stream just really extended all the way across the southern USA. And this is the time of the eclipse. And this is the problem here. Probably going to have some clouds associated with this. Hopefully... There's going to be some breaks in this and you can be able to see the eclipse here, but that's not a good look with that subtropical jet stream most likely having clouds associated with it. Now, if we look at the European on the left versus the Canadian on the right, this is a very late on the night of April 7th. So as we start to scroll through the early morning hours, you can see the European is just having nothing of it. By the time we get to the eclipse, it almost mimics the path of totality here across portions of Texas. And you got this mixed bag kind of up across Illinois and Indiana and Ohio here. But the models are kind of showing something nice there for the Northeast. If you're in Montreal, maybe drop down towards the border there right in the path of totality <clears throat> as it comes off of New York and Vermont and you might be able to get a nice show and look at Maine might get some nice viewing out there as well. But a lot of the models have been showing places across Illinois and Indiana as well and maybe Cleveland some some clear skies at times and hopefully co coinciding with the eclipse. So you can see the problem we're having with this is usually quite clear across Texas, you know, 70, 75 percent chance of clear skies, climatologically speaking, this time of year. However, that does not look to be the case this time around. Now, taking a look at Buffalo, New York, three minutes and 46 seconds of totality. So that's nothing to sneeze at. That's much better than 2017 Eclipse. If you can get good viewing out here, you are going to get a spectacular show. And this is Plattsburgh, New York, right on the border of Vermont there. And you can see how it passes. It just clips the northwest portion of Vermont, comes out into Canada for a bit, and then back into Maine, the, the path of totality where the greatest duration of the total solar eclipse will exist. So if you're in Canada, you can drop down here and just, you know, you have to cross into the USA to get a nice show. And the weather might be lining up quite nice for some viewing across some of the north east there and if we look at the gfs the canadian if you what i showed a few minutes ago kind of showed some high clouds but it showed some breaks but the gfs is not having anything of that this is the most recent gfs run and it's showing some pretty good cloud coverage across texas where i know a lot of people have made previous plans to go out and view and you know the eclipse is going to last longer out here and when you were making your plan several months ago you think texas is going to be usually less clouds in places off to the northeast so that's kind of a logistical problem we're dealing with with this eclipse upcoming here and just kind of showing you that places across what is there st louis right here and if you drop to the south and east look at that you're still getting four minutes and eight seconds just a totally mind-blowing show it will be it does hit little rock arkansas as well so hope i'm just hoping that some places can clear out for the 
afternoon hours and that the severe storms in some of these areas back down across Texas and potentially up into Arkansas are not going to be too severe. Now, this is looking at the GFS. So I want to show you a little bit of something here. So these global models are not as high resolution. And this is the time of the eclipse. And you can clearly see that this is not a good look. You can see all the overcast skies here across Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas. And then it starts to clear out maybe a little bit off to the further portions of the Northeast. But what I'm waiting for to come in for a view here is tomorrow night, this North American model is finally going to start to be able to reach out and see what's coming here for the eclipse. It goes out 60 hours. This is right now just onto the April 6th afternoon hours. But you can see the higher resolution kind of does a better job showing exactly what the extent of the cloud cover may be. And we'll keep working on this over the next few days to kind of see how thick this cloud cover is going to be as well. Because if it's just high, wispy clouds, it's still going to be an amazing show with that when totality hits with that eclipse. So anyway, I um, hope, uh, hope I, this is helping you guys make plans here or decide whether or not you want to go and view the eclipse and maybe make some last minute changes. I know it's tough because I, I saw that map out there in social media yesterday where the bed and breakfast across the USA were just absolutely completely booked, you know, for it looks like a few hundred miles on each side of, of totality here. So there's not really much leeway. There's probably not many hotels to get in those areas. It's going to be trying to rent a car. It's going to be a logistical nightmare also. So hopefully you can make changes if you need be, or just maybe stay at home if you want to avoid the clouds or not, or if you want to come out and take the chance. I mean, that's up to you. But anyway, we'll continue to do this day by day. I'll do another update tomorrow, which will go on the Pacific Northwest weather page. I'll put this one on the California weather watch page. I'm just flipping, flopping back and forth so people can kind of get a look at these videos before they start to head out and try to view the eclipse. I know people that are driving out from places across Pacific Northwest right now actually getting in position for this event. So I'm going to get out there and try to stay mobile as well. And I hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.